Shekinah Grace 24-7, a church community that trains and equips people to live a supernatural life filled through the Holy Spirit that loves God and one another. We want to advance the kingdom of God locally and globally. We love God and we love the family. You are welcome. Um, so I do uh, have a word for us. You know, every time a speaker shares or preaches, the first person the message is for is for the speaker. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <coughs> and then God takes it from the speaker and then gives it to the rest of the church. Praise the Lord. So I want to speak today on the power of influence. We've just seen a short clip on one servant of God who was faithful to God and willing to serve God and willing to accept the call on her life to do what God called her to do and did great things. And we're here today because of that with the Foursquare Church. So my message today is titled The Power of Influence. And God has created you to be an influence in your homes in your communities, in your neighborhoods, in your church, in your workplaces, in your schools, and wherever you go. Amen? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you are the Almighty God, that there is no other but you, Lord, that we worship you, Almighty God. We pray, Spirit of God, that you would speak to our hearts today. That as we hear your words, Lord, our lives will be transformed, our minds will be changed, Lord, and renewed by the hearing of your word. That we will leave here different, Father God, and that as we leave here today, that your spirit will continue to minister into our hearts and into our lives, Lord. That your words not go void, Lord, but that they make an effective change in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So the power of influence, you know, I look around the room today and I just see bright lights of Jesus Christ in every one of you. Amen. 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 And I think that at times we don't realize, we can't even begin to fathom the power that God gives us to use here on earth. Amen? Amen. Because he sees fit. It's his choice to give. We have inherited through Jesus Christ. So in Mark 4, 21, I'm going, to get a, I'm going to be using a few different scriptures, but to start off, Mark 4, 21, and then Jesus asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? And he said, of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light is going to shine. You are called to shine. This church, this ministry has been called to shine and make a difference in this city, in this world. And with God with you, he will use you for his glory. Amen? Amen. Yes. So we have the power to influence other, ev- others every day of our lives, our families, communities, churches, and anybody that you come into contact with, you have the power inside of you to influence them. Amen? Amen. Whether you want to or not, (laughs) or whether you believe you can or not, just the look on your face, just the way you greet somebody will influence them. You believe that? Amen. Are we ready? All right. So God has called us to be an influence to the world, to be a lamp that shines bright on its stand, and we have been called to make a difference. Amen? Amen. We haven't been called just to go around doing the same old thing and not making a difference in that. We have been called to make a difference, to impact people for Jesus. You are here today because God has called you to make that difference through the power of His Holy Spirit. Now, I say that God has called you because there are times that Even as Christians, we've been told so many things by the world. We've been labeled by so many things by the world and put into these boxes that we think we can't possibly do anything for the Lord. Or what can I do? I just have so little. Or I don't have what the pastor has or what so-and-so sister has. You have what God has given you. Amen? 
and he wants you to use it. There's a word in the Bible that says, a verse of scripture that says, if you are faithful with the little bit that I give you, I will give you more. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But if you don't take the little bit that God has given you and do your best, take a few risks with it, good risks, okay? But do your best with it. How can God bless you with more? I challenge my church all the time. Because some of you, well, all I have to do is this little bit or it's so insignificant. That is a lie. <laughs> the yeah. devil is a liar. It's not God speaking, amen? God gives us. Be faithful in the little God has given you. And he will give you more. He will entrust you with more. That's who he is. And you will make an, a greater and greater difference for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Many influences that we are affected by in the world. TV, radio, internet, social networks. There's so much stuff out there. Even the buses, even the bus stops have all kinds of propaganda and, and, and things up, you know, that affect us. Right? That try to get into our lives, try to get our thinking to change, try to get our attitudes to change. The influence that we experience will affect and shape the kind of person that we are. And then it will also affect the kind of influence that you are to other people. As children of God, we want to experience God's influence so that we can turn around and be that to other people. We don't want to be depending on the things of this world. They lead to death and destruction, right? Yes. The things of God lead to life, everlasting, abundance, healing, freedom. In the name of Jesus, amen. That is the one thing so strong in my heart when I became a Christian. I am free. I have been set free to worship God. Jesus has set you free to be who he called you to be. Amen. Amen. Walk in it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't depend on the things of this world. Jesus working in us uh, is what truly makes the difference and the life-changing difference in other people. What does the dictionary say about the word influence? The dictionary says, that influence is the capacity, these are powerful words, it's the capacity or power of persons or things to be a compelling force. Doesn't the Bible say that God draws men unto him? God draws, he compels men unto him. And it's a compelling force on to produce effects on the actions, behaviors, and opinions of others. So God uh, wants to influence us, and influence means to be able to impact somebody's life so that you see a change, so you see a difference in their lives. How many of you have experienced change in your life since you came to Jesus? How many of you? Praise the Lord. That's a good thing. <laughs> so some key words in that definition are force, produce. Produce means to make something out of. Produce to effect. To be an influence, one must have a force. And what is our force? The Word of God, the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Word of God, Spirit of God. We need to see our effectiveness in others and situations when we are being an influence in their lives. Influences produce results. They change something that we can see. Now by faith, we serve God. We share the gospel of Jesus Christ. By faith, we pray for people. We believe that God is going to do something, right? And what is faith? What does the Word of God tell us in Hebrews? What is faith? Faith is the evidence of things not seen, but things hoped for. Amen. Could you imagine, you know, who likes to see evidence? I like to see results. I like to see proof. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so God is interesting to work with us, right? I like to look, God, show me. I need to see. <laughs> um, so if you think of that, faith is the evidence of things not seen. So somebody tells you something, I don't know. So he says, well, the sky is blue. 
And I'll say, well, what's the evidence of it? Well, look, the sky is blue, right? I mean, it looks blue to me. It makes sense, right? But if I say to somebody, the doctor gives me a bad report, and I said, I'm healed in Jesus' name. But the doctor looks at the report. He says, no, no, but the evidence (laughs) is saying otherwise. I says, yes, but my report comes from God. And my evidence is my faith in Jesus Christ. And it says that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't that amazing? So (laughs) I was thinking about that today. So our faith that we don't see (laughs) is our evidence. That's it. You say, well, how can you say that? How can you do that? How can you believe that? I do. Because my faith, my God says this and this and this. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. (laughs) So I was just looking at that scripture today. I just, I never looked at it that way. And I thought that is so neat. All right. So we need to use or see our effectiveness in others and situations when we're being an influence in their lives. So what kind of an influence are we? Now, this is a personal question for you. When I, you know, when I'm done here and I go home and I sit at home with God and I say, okay, God, what kind of an influence am I? Who am I influencing? Am I influencing anybody for that matter? Right? We got to ask ourselves this. We got to check in with God all the time. Am I doing okay? Am I doing this right? Do I need to fix something? Right? So ask God, who am I influencing? Think about it. Ponder it. Reflect on it. Who did you, whose life did you touch this past week, these past two weeks, this past month? You want to think about that. What kind of an influence are we? What does Jesus and the Holy Ghost produce when he enters somebody's life? What does Jesus and the Holy Spirit produce? Change. What else do they produce? Joy. Joy. Fullness of joy. Hallelujah. What else does it produce? Freedom. Freedom. Amen. Freedom. It also produces complete transformation. Amen. Amen. And fruitfulness. If you're a Christian and you're serving the Lord and your heart is focused on the kingdom of God, you are going to be a fruitful person. Your hands will be blessed. Your feet, wherever you walk, will be blessed. What your hands touch will be blessed. Amen. Amen. So reflect. Ask yourself, what have I been doing? Have I been fruitful? Have I been an influence of Jesus Christ on other people's lives? What effect will it make? If you and me are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, it will create change not only in us, but all around us. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you walk into a room and the environment has to change? It has to, right? There's no other way. It just can't be. The Bible says that as we go forth, angels of God are all around us. How can the environment not change? If it doesn't change, ask God what's going on. Amen? Amen. Say, Lord, what's going on? My environment should be changing as I walk into a place, right? Ask God what's going on. You'll change your church, your communities, our city, our country, and the world as people go out and serve God in the areas he's called them to serve. Bearing of good fruit is the evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm going to say that again. (laughs) Bearing of good fruit is the evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So people will say, well, Pastor, what about spiritual gifts? Aren't those evidence of the Holy Spirit in somebody's life? What do you guys think? Are they? They are. They are. Right? God gives spiritual gifts, but He expects us to have the fruit of the Spirit within us. Amen? Amen? The transformation in our lives. So yes, through the Spirit of God, He gives us spiritual gifts according to His will. But the fruit of the Spirit in us is the true transformation the Holy Spirit has done within us that we are serving the Lord, right? In spirit and in truth. So not only spiritual giftings uh, which are given to edify the church, they're giving to a... You know, spiritual gifts are given to witness. Ultimately, that's what it's about. (laughs) God's Bible, God's story is about redemption. He wants to save the world. But because we're so stubborn and we don't want to listen, 
God knows that he has to catch humanity's attention with powerful, miraculous, spiritual things that we, after experiencing, we say, well, there couldn't be any other way but God doing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and spiritual gifts serve for that. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? You can have someone operating in spiritual gifts and then you're looking for the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> you're wondering where it is. Um, because God gives as He pleases. So we need to be changed. We need to be transformed by the power and, and Holy Spirit of God. The fruit of the Spirit is the character of God. There's been a lot of stuff happening lately, right? In the world. A lot of really nasty, heartbreaking stuff. As we see our brothers and sisters being killed. And, and all kinds of things happening. And people are saying, oh, well, there's... You know, two gods, and, and, I, and I think, well, what kind of nature does your God have if you think he's telling you to go out and kill people? That's not the nature of our Heavenly Father, of our Almighty God. His nature is the fruit of the Spirit. It's love and patience and kindness and gentleness, and help me here, self-control and, yes. and all of you know, the other ones. I can't, it's all in Galatians. We'll go to it at the end, but... <laughs> I don't remember the off the top of my head. So do we continuously remain an effective godly influence in the world today and in our workplaces? John 15, 1 to 8, the vine and its branches, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, Jesus says, and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So much of the Bible kind of interconnects, you know. The Great Commission is to go out and preach the gospel to all nations, making disciples, teaching them and training them in the ways of the Lord, baptizing them in the ways of the Lord. And Jesus says, if you remain in me, you will show to be my disciples. Amen? The church of God needs to show that they are different, needs to show that they serve someone else other than the things of this world. Amen? And then it says... Some people might like this scripture. It says, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done. Right? Yes, I love that scripture, Pastor. I'm going to ask God for this and this and this. It will be done in Jesus' name. What God is getting at here, if you remain in Jesus Christ, and if you allow yourself to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, your thoughts will be God's thoughts. Amen. We got that? It's not our own thoughts. If we're serving the Lord, if we trust Jesus, we're being transformed through the Spirit of God, we're seeing the change in us. Amen? I know that you see the change in your lives. Every few years, you're like, wow, I've grown, I've changed, this is different. I'm a different person more and more and becoming more like Christ. So if your mind is more like Christ and your thoughts are more of Christ and your desires are more of Christ, whatever you ask for, God will give you. <laughs> it will be done. Because you're asking according to his heart. Amen? Amen. Not according to your own. <laughs> so in this parable, it's clear and teaches us um, that to be fruitful and to be effective and an influence for Jesus, we need to remain in Jesus. We need to stay connected to him. You know, we can't just say, I surrender to Jesus Christ and I'm a Christian now. But now I'm going to go off and do things, you know, I want to have all these plans and do all of these things. It's good to have plans. It's actually very important to have plans and goals. 
But then you've got to check in with God and say, okay, Lord, look, I've got this and this and this worked out. I've got this and this and this planned out. Does this make sense to you? Is this what you have in store for me? Because if it isn't, close some of these doors. Amen? Close the doors that are intended to be closed and open the ones that you intend to be open for me. I want to say something. When you ask God, and when you see the thing is we live in this world, amen? amen. And we live with the, the stuff of this world, and we still have our, our daily lives, our homes, and our spouses, and the kids, and school, and work, and everything else that comes with it, right? But if we ask God for His will to be done in our lives, you're going to get the best from God. I always say, why are you going to settle for second best? You might have to wait a little bit longer. Amen? You might have to change a few things. But why would you settle for second best? Because if you wait on the Lord, He's going to give you the best. He's not going to let you down. And you know what? It's going to be a little bit painful sometimes. You're going to feel like you've been waiting a long time. But know that when it comes, it can't be any better. <laughs> it just... <laughs> Like, it cannot, because he's given you his best. Praise God. So be faithful in the little while you're waiting, um, so that he can bless you with the greater that he has in store for you. So how do we stay connected to Jesus? How do we stay connected to Jesus Christ on a regular basis? What are some of the things that we do? You all know them. We pray, yeah. Fast. Go to church, yeah. So we surrender, right? Oh, well, I surrendered when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Yeah. But we need to surrender to Christ every single day. Amen. We need to go to the cross and be crucified, crucify our flesh every day that the Spirit of God would be greater within us and we would decrease, right? The Spirit increase and we decrease. We need to surrender our lives to Him. And some people will say, well, I have surrendered my life to him. And, and, all this, and I, I would say that too. And I ask, every single part of your life have you surrendered to Christ? You've let go of every single thing. <laughs> and I can answer no. Some things are hard to let go of, right? But God is asking, let them go. Let me do it. Amen? Amen. We must let go of things of the past. There are a lot of Christians walking around in our churches today hanging on from things of their past. And what the enemy does is he haunts people with that and God wants us to let go of those things. We must be willing to risk it all for him. When I think of all, I think of Abraham and Isaac. And you all know the story. Great man of God, father Abraham. And he had a son at a very late age. Finally, finally, his promise from God came. Finally. <laughs> and then God says, well, I want him, Abraham. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to sacrifice him. I can't even begin to imagine the despair Abraham felt, thinking that he would have to go through something like that. But how faithful is God to test our hearts, test our lives, and then when the time came, uh, God said, no, don't even think of doing such a thing. But I wanted to see where your heart was at. Amen? So God is looking at us. And there's, if you haven't gone through one of those really difficult times in your life yet, and you're serving Jesus, there might be a point where you do go through one of those difficult times. And what God does is He breaks us down so that He builds us up to be a great influence for Him in this world. Hallelujah. I have some testimonies. I'm just wondering if I should share them. That's all. I'm going to continue. God doesn't give us more than we can handle. In fact, He usually places us in uncomfortable and challenging situations, and there He does the most amazing work in us. Amen. When we feel unqualified or unprepared, that's when we truly give it to God and say, I just cannot, I need you to help me in this. Amen. So we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and not let ourselves get discouraged 
and intimidated, but we trust and believe that God will work things out for good, and that's exactly what he will do. Amen? Amen. So a few years ago, I went through a situation. I'm married to a wonderful man. My husband is a good man, and he supports me in everything that I do in the greatest sense that he does not get in the way of what God has called me to do. Amen? Amen. He always says, okay, you go. God, <laughs> God has his hand on you to do what you need to do. And we've been married for 10 years, which is a wonderful thing. We celebrated last year 10 years of marriage. And we have a little daughter, and she's one and a half years old, roughly. She's a little older than that. but, And she's our only child right now. And... Um, some people wonder, well, why did you wait so long to have a baby if you were, you know? And it wasn't that we couldn't. Um, but what had happened is we, we both, uh, I was a new Christian when I, when I got married, fairly new Christian. I've been serving God for uh, 13 years this year. That's how long I've been serving the Lord, 13 years. And um, that's a story for another day. But my husband and I got married shortly after that. He comes from a Christian family. He has uncles that are pastors, grandfathers a pastor, and all kinds of amazing fire people for God. <laughs> um, and so, you know, when you get married, it's always an adjustment, right? There's a lot of stuff you bring with you <laughs> into your relationship. And things got hard. Things got really hard for us. Things got to the point uh, where they become very unhealthy. And at the time, three, four, five years ago now, I think I'd say five years ago, things got very hard. Um, I became very, very sick, and I wasn't able to work for about four months. And uh, I, aside from doing ministry stuff, I work as a caseworker for social services with the City of Toronto. And I wasn't able to go to work. I had become very sick, and the whole situation in our home became very unhealthy. And this whole relationship thing came before the church and before the leadership of the church and my pastor and I was leading worship and I said, I'll step down from worship. I won't, you know, I won't be in any kind of leadership position at the time. And they had meetings, et cetera, et cetera. And they had made the decision, no, stay on because of the way things had worked out. They felt that it was good for me to do what I was doing for the Lord, to continue serving the Lord. Anyways, a lot, a lot of stuff happened. We find that my husband had left uh, I hadn't seen him for eight months, um, and I was just, you know, trusting the Lord, and a lot of people in the church, inside the church, get divorced, you know, people are trying to, to, to um, how do you say, uh, get me to meet other people, like, it was just nonsense, and I would just say to God, Father God, what is your will for this, because it, it hurts so much right now. Um, and I was, I was very sick. I had vertigo. I don't know if any of you know what that is. Um, and I, it was terrible. Um, I was depressed. I was in depression for a while. Um, and I cry a lot. You don't know me very well yet, but if you get to know me, you'll notice that I, even before God, I cry a lot. <laughs> um, and I couldn't cry. I was so numb that I couldn't even cry. And that's when I knew things were just so wrong with me. Well, I thought anyhow wrong with me, but my situation was so difficult that even I couldn't feel the, I was so numb, I couldn't feel the emotion, and I would get to work and sit at my computer, and I would just, actually I wasn't at that time, I was, I, when I had gone back, but at first I couldn't cry, I was very numb, I was very sick, my husband had gone eight months, and I just kept praying, and he had gone through some situations, he wasn't making the best choices at the time, but I still continued on, and I said, Lord, my husband is somewhere. He's out there, and you know him, and you know me, and I know this is what this looks like right now, but what do you want me to do with all of this? And it came to the point where our we had a mutual lawyer. We had gotten our divorce papers were written up. They were done, and my lawyer called me, and he said, and I was fasting and praying and continued asking God for his guidance and his will and the whole thing. And then at that point, when I got that phone call from the lawyer, he said, come in and come and sign the divorce papers. And I said, wow, this is it, Lord. Like, you're allowing all of this to happen. And then shortly after, I hadn't seen my husband for eight months, I got a phone call from him. He says, I'm not signing any divorce papers. 
I don't know. <laughs> now what? <laughs> I was just so... <laughs> but I mean, of course, we know what. But at, the, at that moment, I had gone through so many emotions and depression. and di Like, it was just a really horrible time. Horrible but good in the end. God works all things for good. Um, so then anyways, he had called home and, and he said, I'm not signing any divorce papers. And I thought, wow. And, I'm, and I told him, I said, I need a couple of days to just process this stuff because I don't, like, I'm thinking, God, like, what's going on, <laughs> you know? So it took me a couple of days, and I called my husband back, and I said, yes. I said, we won't sign divorce papers. I said, but where do we go from here? <laughs> so we started dating again. It was fun. <laughs> we, did, <laughs> we didn't get back together right away. We hadn't, be, you know, I hadn't seen him for eight months, and we had had problems before that. And we started dating again. It was so neat. He would take me out to lunch and dinner and all that nice stuff you get when you're dating. <laughs> Some of it goes away after you get married. <laughs> but you guys are all good, right? So you'll treat your wives well, right? <laughs> but anyhow, the end of the story was we did end up getting back together. And now we have our beautiful daughter. And it's been over three years now. Yeah, it's been over three years now that that happened. And during that time, I had so much counsel around me, like the world and different people giving me their opinions. I was only separated from my husband, and I had a leader say to me, he's not your husband anymore. I'm thinking, well, of course he is. <laughs> We're not divorced yet. He's not here, but he's still my husband, you know. Um, it was just so much stuff, but I give God the glory. But see... God really, really broke me, crushed me down. And just at the time when my husband and I were starting to work things out is when I was licensed as the pastor of Hope for Tomorrow. Um, so today when somebody says something is not possible, I see the devil is a liar. God can do anything. Because <laughs> I've, I've experienced it and I've witnessed it in my own life. Um, and our faith increases and builds up on that. Amen. Amen. And then a year later of being a pastor, just starting off pastoring the church, the president of the Foursquare Church wants to meet with me, and I thought I was in trouble. I, my pa he says, oh, the, the president wants to meet you. And I think, oh, man, <laughs> what did I do wrong? And they said, it's good, it's not bad. And they met with me, and they asked me if I would take on the role of unit supervisor. And I thought they were joking at first. Because we have great leaders in Foursquare across the GTA, great men and women of God that have been serving God for a long time and are very seasoned in what they do. Um, so I, I, originally I thought they were kidding, but they said, no, we're serious. And I said, okay, if the national board and all these people approve this role for me right now, then I know it's God allowing it to happen. And of course it was approved, um, so now I'm here serving the Lord and whatever he wants me to do. And serving our pastors. And I'll be serving your church and primarily serving Pastor um, Alan and Angie as well. And your leadership team. So we have to be an influence to other people. When I was going through this stuff, some of my co-workers and people that were close around me, they, some of them knew a little bit of what was going on with me. And they said, how, how can you still like be how you're being? Like have peace and... Eventually, I started crying again. I was so happy. <laughs> my tears came back, and eventually my joy came back. Um, wonderful thing. So we become, everything that happens in our life becomes a purpose, has a purpose in it um, to show other people that God is real, that God is alive. And not just that, but that God loves. Amen? He loves us with everything He's got. He loves us, yes. yes. Amen. And sometimes it's going to be a little bit hard. And sometimes you're going to suffer a little bit. But it is good, amen. amen. The end result is good. John 15, 4, 5. Remain in me, I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. So we can't do anything on our own. We can't do anything apart from God, apart from the Spirit of God. So we always need to ask God to guide and lead us. His will be done. God is good. He simply tells us to remain in Him and He will do the work. Do you know, as a Christian, we don't have to work so hard for God to bless us. Amen? Yeah. 
He says, remain in me, stick with me, pray to me, serve me, and I will bless you. I always see some of the most blessed people are the ones that are really giving their all for Jesus and serving God with all of their heart. Amen. You have the joy of the Lord in your heart. You serve him with everything you have. And I see that as we did, as you guys did worship here today, as your pastor's not here, you know, your pastor's not here and the service goes well, your pastor's doing a good job. (laughs) Because that means everybody knows what they're supposed to do and they do it. (laughs) And you do it because he lets you. Some pastors have a hard time letting go, right? And your pastor is great. So that it's a very good sign that the church does well if he's not here. Scriptures clearly tell us that we are not meant to do it on our own. And if we try on our own, we're not going to succeed. We have to have the influence of the Holy Spirit to have the power to make the difference. Um, we must remain connected to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit on a daily basis. And we, may, we must ask God for wisdom, uh, keep ourselves connected to Him. Luke 6, 43, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick, fig, excuse me, people do not pick figs from a thorn bush. And don't pick grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, good man or woman. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Amen? Amen. So a tree and its fruits. As a leader, I get people coming to me sometimes and saying, Oh, so-and-so said this, or so-and-so said that, or this and this is happening. And I always go back to the Word of God. And the Word of God tells me that by their fruits... I will recognize them, right? The Bible also says that we need to lead a blameless life as Christians, amen? Amen. We'll never be perfect. That's only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But you have to be blameless. And what does leading a blameless life mean? It means that I know the kind of fruit that your pastor produces, and it is good. And if someone comes to me and says, oh, but she did this and this, and I say, well... That's not like Angie to be that way from what I've seen, you know, from her so far. So I'll have a hard time believing it, right? Um, And I'll have to test that and see, okay, well, what's really going on? So we have to lead a blameless life, meaning it will be hard to blame something on you. Amen? That's the kind of life we have to lead. Not that you're perfect, but when people start to criticize you or accuse you of something, others that know you will say, that doesn't sound like her. You guys ever think that way? Or somebody's just thinking, yeah, that's just like him to be that way. (laughs) Sometimes happens too. But the Bible is so clear and so good and so truthful and easy for us to truly understand. I'm finishing here. Um, And I was going to finish off just with the fruit of the Spirit. And I have them in front of me, so I'll get this right. (laughs) It's love, joy, peace, forbearance. Suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the Word of God says in Galatians that against such things, there is no law. There can be no wrong done to you if you are living out the fruit of the Spirit of God. Amen? Nobody can accuse you. And if they do, a judge in a court of law will say, you're nuts. Because this person is living well and has not caused anyone any harm. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. I want to finish off with that. I hope I haven't bored you. I hope that some of what I have shared uh, will stick with you today, not just now, but even when you leave here during the week, that God's Word and some of the verses I've shared will stay in your hearts and in your minds, and that the Spirit of God will speak to you as you move on through your week. And... um, I'd like to just say a prayer, if that's okay. That's okay. Does anybody want, can I do that? Does anybody want prayer? If they want, okay. Um, if anybody wants uh, prayer, I'm willing to pray with you as well. Um, I could just see a general prayer, but if anyone wants individual prayer. Um, you know, this morning when I was getting myself ready for the day and, and thinking about all the things I was going to have to do today, including this message, and I was in my church this morning too, so... <laughs> 
Um, but I just felt that there are people that have been struggling. Um, and I don't know what kind of a struggle, but that people have been struggling with stuff. And God hasn't created us to struggle with things. Amen? Amen. He hasn't. Uh, he's created us to be victorious. He has created us to excel and succeed and to conquer. We are ambassadors of Christ, representing the holy nation of God. Amen? You are a holy nation. Hallelujah. So, I don't, I mean, people were prayed for earlier during worship. I don't know if it was intended that way. Um, but if anyone uh, would like, I can pray with you. Or if anyone is feeling that, that, yeah, you've been struggling um, and you'd like prayer about it, I am a faith person. I will believe with you for God to help you overcome and succeed. Amen. Amen.